What is up guys and welcome to one of the final Generation 4 matches you will ever see on my channel, which is pretty sad to say. Um, NBZ contacted me and he said since Nintendo is shutting down all the Wi-Fi services for the old games on May 20th, let's have, you know, one final match and uh, just send it on for the nice note, you know what I'm saying? So we, I actually built one of my old NU teams and I hopped on Pokemon Pearl version and we are battling in the old school list of the old school. I'm actually unable to record this, so my character is over there, I'm not hot bitch on the, uh, on the other side, so that's pretty sweet. I feel like there's always going to be a soft spot in my heart for these games because these were actually the games that I first started my YouTube channel on and when actually, it was like the games that I actually got really interested into the Pokemon scene and NBZ was actually one of the guys that was there with me and he was always a big YouTuber and I always watched his videos and stuff and we never actually really battled but it took us forever but we got a Generation 4 match. Uh, anyways, what you missed was basically just me leading off with my Raticate. He led off with his, uh, his Mantler and Mantler actually decides to set up a Reflect because he saw Raticate being a big old physical threat and he actually ended up switching uh, this thing in because he realized that my Tinny Milk was going to get up some Stealth Rocks. That was a nice play. He got it in before the Stealth Rocks come and uh, this thing is actually going to be a pain in the ass. I put a lot of thought into this into this part right here actually because I was kind of figuring out what these things do. I know they will wisp but I know they, they sword stance and they hit pretty hard. Um, but if I can actually just get a paralyzed on it, I realize that he probably can't really hurt Titty Milk anyways. And if he does end up burning me, that's completely fine. Um, I do go for the Thunder Wave there, and as you'll see, I believe he tries to go for the Will-O-Wisp, and it actually misses. Which is a damn bummer, and that's kind of the start of a shit ton of hacks that went down in this battle, but it was still good fun, so... At this point, I don't have anything to touch this thing, so, like, literally, his, his name is kind of taunting me there, can't touch me. I'm like, hey, fuck you, bro. So I have to find out what I want to switch into, um, hoping that he can uh, not really hurt me. So I actually found out, I came to the conclusion that Magmordar would be the... Would be the best switch because he actually does end up going, end up going for the X Scissor, which is pretty nice. I was actually about to switch into uh, Espeon, and I was like, wait a second, that would be ridiculous. So, I got this thing in here. He gets paralyzed on that turn, trying to go for the Shadow Sneak just to get that damage. And I go for the Flamethrower. Does a shit ton of damage, as you can totally see. Knocks him down to his Focus Sash. And uh, at least the Reflect wears off there. So, that's pretty nice. Um, he's going to go for the Shadow Sneak one more time, and he actually breaks through the Paralysis. And Salamence doesn't really give a shit. And I go for the Flamethrower one more time. And that is a dead ass bug. It's weird. Look at how slow the HP bar do goes down even when it just has one HP. I thought that was pretty hilarious. When I was doing this battle live, I was like, what the fuck? Why is all the HP going down so damn slow? Is this how we used to live back in the day? Jesus. So he's figuring out who to switch in. He comes to the conclusion that Jingle is a pretty swell guy to have out here. And this actually, this thing is badass. Chime Echoes are just... I remember I used to use these things a lot in NU in, in the, back in the, uh, the Gen 4 days. And these things come in handy. I realized that it's probably going to be specially defensive, so I actually decided to switch in Dick Pinch, which was a stupid move. My old buddy Dick Pinch just gets hypnosis. First try, put to sleep, and that's awful. I should have stayed in and probably let Magmordar take that, and then Pinsir would have been nice to have not asleep. But, you know, shit happens. Um, I can actually kind of stay in here and try to burn some turns of sleep. I don't know what this Chimeco wants to do. It can be either one of those, like, dual screener kinds of things. He actually just decides to go for the Psychic, and it does... A shit ton of damage, look at that, like, look at that damage. Gen 4 Pinsir is just not having it. Um, I realize that he's probably going to stay in and go for the Psychic one more time and kill me. Um, I, I'm actually just going to switch out here and I decided to go into Pussy because I can take whatever he wants to do. These, I know these Charm Echoes sometimes carry Shadow Ball, but that would be one hell of a prediction considering that there isn't any team previews in this game, so you pretty much just have to like free ball it. <laughs> Which is pretty nice because he can have a Pokemon tucked away and he doesn't know what it is. It was a, it was a way different metagame back then. It was actually really interesting. So I stayed in. I go for the signal beam here and um, this Chimeco right here has a massive amount of HP investment. It's kind of cool seeing it from the uh, from the other side. You can kind of like check out the whole their stats and everything. But uh so he now decides to wish, um, which is completely fine with me, I guess, because I didn't think he would carry the protect anyway. So I do have a free attack here. Um, my Espeon is Life Orb, so I can hit anything really hard with basically whatever I want. So he's thinking about it. He's like, you know what? Yeah, you know, I'm going to switch. Might as well switch the hell out. So Jingo's going to be saved for later. He sends in Mantler, which is a shitty move on my part because I went for the Shadow Ball. And fuck my life, that was a really nice play on his part. I guess he predicted that. Uh, Mantler actually play Mantler just comes in MVP in this match. Shit. Uh, so he gets the wish, brings him back to full health. Not really that big of a deal. And now I'm kind of realizing that I could stay in. I could try to hit this thing, but this thing is just bulky as shit, and it wouldn't be worth it to lose my SP on that early. So I decide to switch. I go into Tits McGee, and here's where things just got a little bit, a little bit stupid. Let me let me tell you. Um, so he goes for the Thunder Wave. That right there. That's a nice little. Nice little base layer of, of hacks on me, so I'm like, okay, the odds are against me here, but whatever. I'm gonna go for the uh, the sleep powder, 
because I don't think he has anything that can block it anyways. He actually just stays in, goes for the Thunderbolt, which kind of shows me that he doesn't have any other switch, and he kind of just is sacking Mantler here. I go for the Sleep Powder, it misses, and I'm like, okay, shit happens. Sleep Powder is not that accurate of a move, but at least I'll probably hit it next turn, right? Right. So, Mantler's staying in, he's like... He's pretty much just considering whether or not he wants Mantler to be the one that gets put to sleep, or if he wants to switch. Um, he actually just stays in and goes for another Thunderbolt, which is like gonna knock me down to about half, and I get the pair hack. So, it had to happen at least once, and Titsuki at least is above above half half held, and I'll, I'll be able to put this thing to sleep eventually. Or at least I thought. So, he Thunderbolts again, that's gonna knock me down, and I go for the Sleep Powder and miss! And <laughs> what the fuck is that? Come on, Titsuki! I know you can do this. I know you can do this. So he's looking at his team. He's like, okay, this is this is getting ridiculous. He's just missing all sorts of sleep powders. What the hell should I do here? Should I just stay in and go for a Thunderbolt, not quite kill it and have it have another chance to sleep powder powder me or not? So he actually stays in, goes for the Thunderbolt, Tens McGee breaks through the paralysis, goes for the sleep powder, and misses. And I I will never use a Venomoth ever again. This guy th this fuck this Tits McGee, man, I swear. So he's over here laughing with his fucking full health Mantler. Titsumiki's paralyzed, has a sliver of health left. Ain't done shit yet, and I'm just absolutely pissed off. Because at this point, I, I should have just been using attacks. And I was like, I really just wanted to sleep. I should have just been using attacks. But he gets one more, one more Thunderbolt, and Titsumiki dies. So that's like gotta be like a, gotta be like a world record or something. That is just ridiculous. So I'm sitting there. I'm pretty pissed off at this point. I'm like, wow. I don't even know how to deal with this Mantler now. Damn it. I actually do have shit for it, but I realize. I'm gonna send in Salamence, I have the Focus Blast, I, I'm carrying the Expert Belt, so I figure it would maybe kill it, if not, knock it down to red. And he couldn't really do much to me anyway, so that, I had a pretty good option, I guess. He decides to stay in, and I go for the Focus Blast. Thankfully it hits! I would've probably turned my game off right then and there if that shit missed. Accuracy is not on my side, man. So, the Focus Blast does hit, and it knocks it down to 31 HP. And I was like, well, shit. Unluckily for me, he goes for the Thunder Wave, and that's gonna make Salamence basically useless, and Mantler is still just over here laughing at me like a piece of shit. So, he's gonna, um, I believe he's gonna switch back into his Chimeco. Um, I actually think I just went for the Flamethrower anyways, it would it would have killed anyways. And the Jingle's not at that much HP anyways, so he comes in, gets raped by some Stealth Rocks, and then uh, is at the point where a Flamethrower is gonna kill it, and thank God at least I'm making some progress here. At least I'm not getting completely fucked. But, uh, Nagmordar is looking, looking pretty solid over there, at least he got a kill even when he's paralyzed. Now he has a free switch on basically whatever the hell he wants, he can outspeed Salamence very easily, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of options for him at this point. Um, so I'm actually, I'm just chilling, he's taking forever on this turn. And he decides to send in Skulls. Skulls right here, see, a Marowak is never, is never a good thing if you're battling against it, I swear to god. Because these assholes, these things are just too fucking, too strong. I actually just decided to let it stay, I just stay in and let it kill my, uh, let it kill my Megmortar, which is fine, because then I would have a free switch, and I was looking at my team, and I was looking at it, and I was, I was like, I don't have shit for this asshole fucking Marowak. Um, what I do come to the conclusion of is that Dick Pinch could come in and maybe burn some turns of sleep. I realized he's pretty much useless at this point, and I was kind of like, obviously, he's not gonna wake, he okay, of course he's not gonna wake up first turn, and then, uh, I'm just gonna get raped by a fire punch. So... Dick Pinch, you have failed me in the, your game of origin. What is your deal, bro? If you wouldn't have been put to sleep, that would have been perfect. Um, but yeah, so at this point I'm looking at my team again, and I'm like, what the hell else can I do to this thing? All I have left is Espeon, who carries, um... I carry Grass Knot, but that's not gonna cut it because Marowak is not a fat piece of shit like he should be, and uh, the Grass Knot is gonna do a lot of damage, even with the Life Orb, but it's not gonna quite kill it, because Marowaks actually have a decent base special defense is like 80 or 70 or something like that but it's not bad at all and uh, the grass nut isn't gonna kill it because that thing is not heavy enough and he's gonna be able to earthquake my pussy and that is a dead ass espion he gets a critical hit but it definitely didn't matter because marowaks are fucking beastly with their thick clubs and shit you know the deal with these guys now all i can do is send in joint joint can uh pretty much all i can do is protect get my uh get my flame orb real quick and then I was like, I was kind of hesitant to whether or not this, uh, this facade would kill this thing, but it was literally, like, the only option I have. And Joint is a powerful motherfucker, so, you know, you gotta look out for this guy. So I go for the facade, and Skulls is definitely not gonna really enjoy that, and it's definitely gonna die to a crit. Not sure if the crit mattered, but probably not. So, Joint's gonna be hit, hurt by his burn, and I'm actually realizing I'm, in, I'm not in a, too bad of a situation here. I have, I still have my full-on Raticate. 
And Raticate has been known to fuck some shit up. If you've ever watched my videos, you would know that. So, joint staying, joint staying in, waiting on whoever the hell he wants to send in. He actually decides to send in the asshole Mantler again. And I was like, okay, this is like free food for fucking Joint. Joint's gonna be able to uh, get intimidated, which is the only bummer. And uh, he lives he lives at Stealth Rocks with 9 HP. Um, I guess his plan there was pretty nice, because he got the Intimidate, and he's gonna get another turn of burn damage, and then it's just kind of a... Kind of a bummer to be joint at that point. So I go for the facade. It's going to kill Mantler, which is really nice. And he actually has a Hariyama tucked in the back of his team, which I haven't been able to see yet. And that right there is uh, going to fuck me up. So he sends out this thing, and that was really... That sight was kind of a bummer, because it all came down to pretty much what his last Pokemon was. So this uh, this asshole is going to go for the fake out. It's going to do a lot of damage. I mean, because I'm a, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a damn radicate. He's going to get the flinch. And I'm gonna get burned. And Raticate's not looking too solid at this point. And uh, this Hariyama is going to take a facade easily. And he clearly has a fighting type move, so that's gonna fuck me up. So Rice is pretty much chilling. I go for the facade with the Intimidate. Definitely is not gonna be enough. Um, I didn't have anything else to do though. So I go for the facade. It does at least over half. Look at that. Look at that power. Raticate does not play any game. So he goes for the revenge, and that is definitely definitely gonna kill Joint. So. That is, uh, wait, I have one, I have one more Pokemon left. What, what the hell do I even have left? He gets his leftovers, which brings him above half. And my la oh yeah, my last Pokemon is Titty Milk, which is a terrible matchup against this Hariyama, which is mainly why, the main reason why it all came down to pretty much what his last Pokemon was. I go for the Body Slam, look at this shitty part. I go for the Body Slam, get the Paralyze, activate his Guts ability, he goes for the Revenge, and that is <laughs> easily gonna kill me. With the, with the guts. See, if I had gone for the body slam and it didn't paralyze, it would have done enough to the point where I could have lived that um, revenge. And then I probably could have killed it with another body slam. But holy shit, that was a bummer. But anyways, though, nonetheless, that was still a really fun match. Generation 4 is just always full of good times. But uh, yeah, always, if you're running a Venomoth, make sure that bitch knows how to hit sleep powders. Because they clearly... Uh, they clearly missed those often. And uh, check out MBZ's channel if you already don't know who he is. He's got some badass videos, and I've always enjoyed his channel, so you guys probably will too. So, see you guys later.